Viktor Grabenikov was a Russian entomologist. That's a person who studies bugs. And he is mostly famous for his discovery of a force called CSE, Cavernous Structure Effect, that he found could counteract the energies of gravity. And he made himself a platform that underneath he put bug parts, wings and wing shells and wing covers. And he claimed this thing could levitate and he could actually travel on this. He also claimed that when he was traveling on this platform that there was a distortion of time and space and a lot of strange uh, things were happening. And it's not surprising, therefore, that reports have come out, people have speculated that it was he, because he subjected his body to these weird forces that his health broke down and eventually killed him. He wrote a book about his experiences called My World, which you can find online in the English translation. And there is um, a lot of information online about it. Just Google Viktor Grubenikov. You can look up CSE, Cavernous Structure Effect, or you can look up his book, My World. When I looked over Victor's research, I had a lot of mixed feelings. On the one hand, I was highly skeptical of any platform that could levitate and travel at the heights and speeds that he claimed. But on the other hand, it'd be awful fun to be able to fly around the countryside with a, on a platform like that. But then on the other hand, who would want to subject their bodies to uh, the forces that could mess you up like that? And also, he really got into the frequencies of the bug parts and resonance and the math and the science. And it's like, oh, that is way out of my ballpark. But the one thing I can see if I can contribute to this entire field of research on the CSE is I have an ability uh, with dowsing. And if you look at my video series, Spirit Field Research, part one, I describe the use of a pendulum. And it has actually been used to identify and locate and study uh, quite a few fields that cannot be detected by other means. So I began researching what he had discovered, and I got out my pendulum to see if there was any way I could um, validate or add to this field of research. And I was very surprised by what I found. So the first thing that I did was I found a bunch of June bug carcasses and dissected them, taking off the elytron, which is the, the uh, shell that goes over the wings that they lift when they're going to fly. Then I took these shells and began arranging them in different directions and distances and different patterns. And what I found is if I took all the, uh, the shells and I laid them out on the table, I would get no reading off them at all. And if I spread them out, I would get no reading off them at all. But if I started to line them up, I turned them open side up, so they're like little bowls, and I started to line them up and gave them a certain spacing, I would start to get a negative ion charge off of them. This arrangement here I have inside of a CD case glued in so it cannot be disturbed. But if I had these all pointed in, and when I say point, if you look on these shells, this is the outside that points away from the head, back toward the back of the body, and this is the little uh, part that attaches to the bug. That's, that's what I call the point. That's, what, that's the part that attaches. If I have them all pointed in, like this, that I get a negative ion charge over this. And I cannot have them touching either, but I get a negative ion charge, like a static charge, over this. It cannot be blown by, by blowing on it. Uh, it doesn't spray, but it is a negative ion charge. And for health reasons, a lot of people have a too strong of a positive ion charge, and they actually need negative ions. And I found that if you put something metal into that ion charge that's above it, the charge will actually travel down the uh, the metal and so a person can actually get like a grounding pillow but instead of plugging the grounding pillow into the ground or into the wall socket you can actually have the the lead end over this and it will pick up the negative static charge and bring it to the pillow so that you can actually be sleeping on a negative ion charge 
it is of interest to note that a static charge does build up over this negative ion charge I assume it's the CSE the cavernous structure effect interacting with the pieces now oftentimes when people are working with the individual shell covers they will observe a ion charge repulsion where a negative ion charge or a positive ion charge will form over these and they will actually repel each other if they have it over a an insulated uh, piece of material now here I don't really see this right now but often at times the videos that you will see they they will drop the wings uh, covers onto each other and they will scoot away from each other well a lot of this may be natural I mean at first it could be a hoax that they may have rubbed the whole place down with wool to get build up the static charge or it may be the cavernous structure effect creating a negative ion charge on the wing pieces themselves and that would cause the like charges to repel so that it would scoot away from each other even if they had not statically charged the plate that they were working on but if a person observes the repulsion it is not uh, it is not wise to assume that that the uh, ion repulsion was the only thing that Viktor Grabinikov had been observing and it is also possible that a lot of the levitation effect of certain beetles that will lift their wing covers and seem to levitate in the air might actually be um, static uh, levitation because the earth has a negative ion charge and if lifting the shell the CSE creates a negative ion charge over the wing shells then it's possible that that may be also contributing to the levitating ability of the beetle now this arrangement was very surprising to me I was working with the, the shells and I found out that if I lined them up like this and it was very important that I had them lined up and spaced just properly because I tried offsetting each of the rows so that this one was down in between so that they'd be staggered like this and I did not get any ion charge off that but if I put them like this and I checked the spacing on it and so I had to make myself a grid here and from the centers of them it was one inch down and half inch across so the centers of these one inch down half inch across I got a very strong negative ion charge over this which was very fascinating and I set it aside and then the next day I went and I went and checked on it again very strong ion charge but the next day it was a positive ion charge I thought what in the world so I set it aside and a little while later I picked it up and it was a negative ion charge again I thought what something's changing on this I get a positive and a negative positive negative and so then I tried to see if it actually was related to the points of the compass and I did find that if I rotated this that the ion charge would change and what I discovered let me pull off this paper here to show you my a little bit compass readout there we go what I discovered with this arrangement was that if it is pointing perfectly north let's just say that that's that's north if it's pointing perfectly north there is actually no ion charge in this at all but if this moves slightly westward of pure north using the points as our as our point a strong positive ion charge builds up over this device and that strong ion charge as you go toward the west will gradually weaken and then dramatically weaken as it is facing straight west and then immediately after you're done uh, straight west it will increase again it will dramatically increase and then it will get stronger and stronger and stronger until this is pointing almost perfectly south that's the strongest point when the points are right here it's strong positive ion charge again and then immediately it goes to a strong negative ion charge so you have a strong negative ion charge again and it will slowly dissipate until you get 
until you're pointing east. There's my east, and it will drop down to almost nothing, and then it will begin to gradually build up again, and it until you get right up here, and it's a strong ion charge again, negative ion charge, until you get perfectly on the north, and then it suddenly drops and becomes a strong positive ion charge again. And this was fascinating because I was thinking in nature, if a animal had like, or a bug had like a compound eye, would the compound eye create this effect? And if so, it would give a rudimentary compass to the flying insect. And I also found it interesting because that charge, let's turn it here so that we're slightly off of north, so we have a strong negative charge. If I tip this just slightly, the charge totally disappears. If I level it off, then it reappears. Tip it the other way. Anyway, if I'm off level, it will disappear. It only maintains that as you are on a level plane. And I thought this is very, very fascinating because in aviation, you have a compass that aviators need, and they also have an, an attitude gauge, which will show how they are compared to the horizon. What is the pitch of the, of the plane? And so by the signal immediately dropping off, if an insect can detect the ion fields, they can detect that they are no longer uh, flying level because that field will drop off.